The interpretation committee's guidance from the IFRIC would be very important for you to pass the SBR. So now let's cover the IFRIC number four, determining whether an arrangement contains a lease. The best way is to go through an example like this. Let's say that we are the ABC manufacturing company that it enters into a contract with XYZ power so that from the ABC's point of view we can rele receive electricity from the specific power plant that provided by the XYZ power company. Of course the contract lasts for 10 years that we will get certain amounts of power from this plant but the XYZ power operates and maintains the plant rather than the ABC company operates it. So if that's the case then, if I were to enter into such contract, whether or not we should cheat that as a lease contract according to the IFRS number 16 leases? Well, the answer for that is you should tell the examiner whether or not ABC can control the use of such plant, which means such asset. But to answer this question, to determine whether or not we've got control, according to the substance over form concept, we can't simply look at the terms and conditions in the contract or finding out such keywords that we can control, but we need to focus on a substance. Now, according to the IFRS number 16, it says that in what circumstances we can control the use of the asset, very importantly, is that we can decide when to use it, where to use it, and how to use it. However, in certain contracts, terms and conditions, it may also say that in order to protect the XYZ power company, which means the lessor, it may have the protective right that determining in what period we can't use the asset. So if that's the case then, even though we've got such protective right, perhaps we still control the use of the asset. Okay, so protective right, we do not really consider that in determining whether or not it contains a lease. However, if the XYZ power company has this substitute right, so which means that, for example, the XYZ company may lease us a car, but the XYZ company may say that we need to return that car whenever they want, which means whenever XYZ company want. So if that's the case then, the lessor has to rise to substitute my asset with another one. So if that's the case then, it will not, it does not contain a lease. Okay, so when do we control the use of the asset? Okay, we can decide when, where, and how to use it. However, here, can we decide when, where, and how to use the plant? The answer is no. Because we can only decide that we can receive electricity from your side. So if this is the case, it seems to me that would be a service agreement and it does not contain a lease at all. So the answer for that is no. Okay, because we can only receive that electricity. However, if we can determine that, okay, from the specific power plant that 95% of the electricity will only be supplied to our company. So if that's the case then, yes, this would be at least components inside there. So making sure that you understand that there will be a 95% principle inside. However, it's highly unlikely that we can get 95% out from the specific power plant. So therefore, I would say the answer for that is no. So we cannot 
from the C's point of view, which means from the ABC manufacturing company's point of view, we cannot recognize the right of use asset as well as the lease liability. But what we can do is to recognize the associated rental expenses that we paid each and every year when we use your service. Now, a couple of points that you can copy, okay, uh, to your exam answer. So firstly, we'll need to see that whether or not we've got a right that we can control the use of the asset. Of course, we can decide when, where, and how to use it. So, which means we've got the ability to obtain benefit from using the asset and direct its use. Directing its use, which means deciding where, when, and how to use it. However, if I were you, I would always tell my students to write not only you can direct the use, but also to talk about the protective rights does not really affect the lease components inside there, but substitute rights will be very important consideration that you always need to consider that. Here's the bonus point. Within that contract, there might be the lease component, which means related to the asset itself, or it can be the non-lease component, which means related to the service itself. The accounting treatment related to the lease and non-lease component would really depend on the accounting policy adopted by the entity. I mean, the entity can either account for the lease and non-lease component separately by mixing them into the right of use asset as well as the lease liability value. Alternatively, the entity can separate these out. So for example, recognizing the right of use asset and lease liability for the lease component, however, to expense the non-lease component related to the services related to, such as the maintenance service, that kind of stuff. Okay then, now, this is the IFRIC number four, a brief introduction of myself, Steve Chun, fellow member of ACCA, ACCA exam marker, an author for four accounting books related to IFRIS, and the ACCA AB magazines, technical writer, for the IFAS column. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the future studies. Good luck. Bye for now. APC Accounting for your future.